Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today we are playing some Age of Mythology Extended Edition. Ooh, slightly bigger than regular edition, I see. Now, this game, if you can believe it, is the legendary follow up to the wonderful creation that is Age of Empires 2. And if you can believe it, I'm actually much better at this game than I am at Age of Empires 2. The only issue is that a lot less people play this game than Age of Empires 2. And I imagine a lot of the people who played this game, even though it was released three years after Age of Empires 2, probably much preferred Age of Empires 2. If for some reason you preferred this game, then please do enlighten me as to why, because by almost every merit, it's a lot worse. But nonetheless, it is good fun. You know what, we should probably do our check to see if anyone's still playing this game. So let's go to the online section. And wow, there's actually quite a few users online. Let's see if there are any games going. Okay, no, there are five. How many were there for Age of Empires again? A little bit more than five. Yeah, I've got to be honest, this doesn't look as popular. I mean, who's even playing Age of Mythology in 2019? This game's been out for, what, 17 years now? Good lord. There is quite a realistic possibility that this game is actually older than you, the viewer, watching this. But hey, if you've ever played the legendary experience that is Age of Mythology, then please do give me a shout, because I'm somewhat of an expert at this game, due to the fact that I decided to buy this game on Steam literally just now. Yeah, full price, £22. <sighs> Oh god, that's gotta hurt. Apparently it goes on sale for 85% off, and I just spent £22 on this bad boy. Oh goodness. Oh well, at least we know where the Patreon money's going this month. But hey, I've invested all my money now, so we might as well jump into the game. So let's load up a single player game, as today I'm going to be showing you how to completely and utterly break Age of Mythology. So I'm going to be taking you on a journey of just regularly breaking a game, to absolutely taking the game and going, you know what, we're just gonna set it on fire, and then release it into the public and be like, hey, this is fine. Now, I haven't even done the tutorial for this game, but don't worry ladies and gentlemen, I'm an expert. I've played so many real-time strategy games like Cooking Mama 4 that actually I'm somewhat of a genius when it comes to any form of real-time strategy. So I have no need for any of these silly learn-to-play mechanics. Ah, oh, who do you think I am? Some kind of Fortnite gamer? Huzzah! Laughs in PC Master Race. Anyway, let's throw ourselves into a random map as I prove just how pro-gamer I am. Now when it comes to this game, there are a few options we can have. For example, we can choose our god. That's right, there are so many gods to choose from. You could be a a Greek god, an Egyptian god, a Norse god, or a fake god. And if you're willing to throw in extra money, you can be a Chinese god. I know, these people invented tea. And yet the game developers decided, hey, you know what, they've done this incredible thing of inventing tea, so naturally the Brit will want to play them. However, we're going to lock this behind a DLC paywall. Yeah, thanks game developers. I've already spent £22 on the game, I do not need to spend another £7 unlocking three new heroes, and also, not even just that, giant map size. You want a larger map? map, well this game's gonna charge you an extra seven quid for it. Oh god, I hate early 2000 DLC policy. I'd also like to point out that the DLC has a Steam review of 38%. To put that into perspective, I'm pretty sure No Man's Sky had a better review than that. And good lord, was that a steaming pile of disappointment. I almost spat my tea out when I first loaded up that game for the first time. Not many things make me waste good tea, so I'm very disappointed at the developers of No Man's Sky. But yes, let us choose our god. We need to pick someone who is truly powerful and completely and utterly broken. So of course we're choosing Poseidon. What makes him better than all of the others? Well, it's because he's just completely and utterly broken, ladies and gentlemen. You see, Poseidon has this lovely mechanic here called Lure. This allows you to target a location for a special stone, and this stone plops down. You want to know what that stone does? It attracts animals to it. That's right. You know those sheep that we used to in Age of Empires 2? Well, guess what? In this game, they're all goats, and you pop down a lure, and suddenly goats are going to start appearing, and they're going to go and assemble around this stone. Is it good? No, it's actually a bit trash, but it is completely utterly broken, which is why we're going to be exploiting the hell out of it. And just like Age of Empires 2, there are various ages. We have the Archaic Age, Classical Age, Heroic Age, and Mythic Age. In each of the ages, we get to choose a certain hero with a certain special unit. Anyway, we're going to select Poseidon to be our legendary lord. And when it comes to difficulty, come on ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm like. We're cranking it up to Titan! Oh, I'm sure you're sat there with your fingers on your like buttons like, Oh god, he's so pro-gamer. He deserves to be on the front page of YouTube trending. You hear that, YouTube trending? It's time to put games from 2002 on the YouTube trending page again. YouTube didn't even exist in 2002. But I'll tell you what 
Uncharted, the greatest game known to man. Anyway, what other options are we going for? We'll have a standard supremacy game mode. We'll have visibility on normal. I don't believe in day and night. I know how some of you are flat earthists and some of you might be dinosaur earthists, but I believe in a no day night cycle for two reasons. Reason number one, the sun never sets on the British Empire, so logically it's always day. And reason number two, I find that it is often tea time. In fact, I find that it is always tea time. So there is no time for day or night, there is only time for tea. And now that that's all sorted, we need to actually start customizing the opponents we're off against. So we're on the hardest difficulty in the game, and if we really wanted, we could turn this into a 1 versus 11. However, I'm afraid that is completely and utterly physically impossible. Even with the exploit I'm going to show you, I don't think there is a single human being on Earth who can win a 1 versus 12 against the most difficult AI this game has. If you yourself have managed it, then make sure to send it my direction and I will send you 1,000 Yorkshire tea bags as way of saying, good lord, you are very impressive. So to make it more realistically achievable, what I'm going to do is turn this into a 1 versus, should we say 4? Yes, 1 versus 4 seems good. So they're all on a team against me and they won't fight amongst themselves. They'll only focus on defeating good old Poseidon. So you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's ready. Let's jump ourselves into a lovely game on the Mediterranean. So if you're all ready, make sure you sat back, relax, you have your warm cup of tea in hand. You might have liked the video already. Hey, you might have even left a comment down below saying what lovely tea you're drinking with this video. Or if your name's Dave, you might have gone into the comment section and gone all about, hey, your favorite coffee. I don't care about your favorite coffee, Dave. Why aren't you drinking tea, Dave? Calm down, Smith. Calm down. Think happy thoughts and cups of tea. There we go. Anyway, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, wabam. Let's begin. And here we are in our game. Now, immediately we have a few things that we need to do. We need to try and locate the enemy. I know. It's as easy as that. All we need to do to win this game is locate a large amount of enemy forces. Quite simple indeed. And whilst we're doing that, we'll also whack down a few houses. Houses are our way of increasing our unit cap because, you know, standard RTS mechanics. Now, I'm currently sending my horsey unit off in very various directions to try and locate an enemy settlement and upon finding the enemy settlement we will be in an incredible situation of infinite wealth trust me also similar to how Age of Empires 2 had sheep this game has pigs there's only one slight issue this is the artwork for the game's pigs. Someone was sat down in an office and thought, you know what, it's 2002. We've had three years since Age of Empires 2 and we've been given a lot more money to improve the art assets for this game. So go find someone who can draw a pig and then they come back with this. Just imagine someone out there in this world was probably paid $100 to draw this pig. Oh wow, 2002 was a wacky year. But anyway, back to the world adventuring. The settlement is here. So what we're going to do is place down our lure. That's our little special thing that allows us to attract animals. Now that the lure is done, it's going to start taking damage. Don't worry, we don't want it to take damage. We want to repair the lure, which is what we're going to do. And now that we've repaired the lure, suddenly we have 2.1 million in resources. Yeah, of course we have. Yeah, so that's how this game works, basically. <laughs> you place down the lure, you repair it, and then congratulations, you now have more resources than any human could ever need. Oh, goodness, I love this game. It's so completely broken. So yes, how this works is effectively we are using one of the few hero powers that actually places down a building. We are then allowed to repair the building. Now, I think typically this game will take resources used to repair the building from your inventory. The only issue is the game doesn't specify how many resources are necessary to repair a lure, because at the end of the day, it didn't cost resources to make. So I do believe the game then flips out and then goes, okay, well, how about we just charge them the maximum possible number of resources and also the minimum possible number of resources, which apparently gets you to minus 2.1 billion. Now, minus 2.1 billion might sound like a pretty negative number to have, but don't worry, you have to look at this in the eyes of a computer program. Minus 2.1 billion is the largest possible number this game can represent, and consequently I have infinite resources because of it. Oh, I love this game. Now because we're playing off against four very difficult AIs, I'm going to be choosing for our next classical age god, Hermes, for the sole reason that he has a ceasefire. This effectively activates the French mode and allows us to convince everyone to stop fighting for a short period of time before they then realise they 
didn't need to stop fighting in the first place. So yes, we'll go for Hermes. Wabam. Lovely stuff. Now when it comes to our minor age god, my personal favourite is Aphrodite, for the sole reason that her special power is curse. This is brilliant because it turns enemy soldiers and villagers just into pigs. It's an absolutely brilliant power up. Someone could be sending their best army your direction and then you just go, uh no. And suddenly they've all been turned into pigs. That's right, once again we've only been in here for a few minutes but we can now move on to the final age, the mythic age. Now when it comes to our choice of gods we can have Artemis, the bow shooter, or Hephatsusus, who just looks absolutely terrifying. And so naturally we'll have to go for him. Ah, and as we can see the AIs are attacking from the south. They're really coming towards us now. Well, this is fine. We can use our men against them. Oh, well, apparently the enemy are using laser crocodiles against me. I have not seen laser crocodiles before, but hey, you know, that's an enemy we're naturally facing. My goodness, how am I meant to keep up with just an infinite swarm of men like this? This is certainly way too many. How was anyone meant to defeat the ridiculously difficult AI in this game? Or perhaps I guess with experience they were meant to. But I don't have time for experience. Experience takes effort and work. Oh my goodness, and they're building forts literally on my border. That is completely unfair. <laughs> that is not balanced. As soon as this guy is finished, our late game unit is pulled into the battlefield. And if I'm honest, that bad boy can probably save the entire day. Because as you can see at the moment, we're just getting swarmed by the AIs. Very colourful group of units. 95% complete. 96. Good. 97. Oh my goodness, this is so close. 98. Come on. Come on. 93. No. No, they're doing roads. Okay, now previously I said I was going to go against four Titan AIs, and then I played against four Titan AIs, and I discovered not only do they cheat on their pop cap, their resource gathering rate, and literally everything in this game, having four of them all against you means that there is physically nothing you can do. So I've decided I'm going to make it slightly easier, slash realistically achievable, by having it against one Titanic difficult AI. What on earth just happened there? Apparently playing on these settings against the AI and Titan difficult difficulty instantly forces them to give up because the game doesn't give them a settlement. Why on earth is that a feature? What is going on here AI? Oh well, that's uh, probably the easiest victory I've ever gotten. I guess that's a free exploit for you if you ever want to grind some achievements without actually even putting in effort. Alright, okay, we're back in for a second time. This time I do believe the AI has been given an actual settlement. Now we're going to have to do my lovely exploit from the previous game where I decided to play off against four Titan difficult AIs. Because let's be realistic here, that just wasn't achievable. But now, with our lovely infinite resources against just one single mega difficulty AI, you're going to see that just about anything is possible if you really put your mind to it. So there we go, we're just running our way down to the enemy base to place down our lure, then we can pop the repair on it, and then we get our infinite resources, we grind our way up through the ages, and that's just infinite money, infinite success. All those lovely glorious things. Ah, uh, there we go, there's our first enemy unit discovered. They have a scout over here, here's a watchtower, so logically their town center should be yellow. Yep, it's right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is place down our lure, get the town center to shoot it, which is exactly what they've done. Pop our repair on it. There we go. And that should be infinite resources as soon as he arrives. Well, bam, infinite resources. Okay, that's lovely for us. Now we can just immediately move ourselves into the next stage and grab Hermes. Before we can move ourselves into the third age of the game, we're going to need to build an armory. So I'll set some lovely little civilians on that bad boy. But now that we're in this age, we can take up our centaurs and just spam out probably, I'm going to say, 10 of those bad boys. And our AIs up here in the north have finally finished building all of these houses, which are going to be great and support our economy. Houses basically increase your pop unit cap, however in this game mode of sudden death, our unit cap is completely and utterly maxed at 140. We can't have anything more than that. So we're just going to have to use some heroes and our lovely centaurs to try and defeat the AI. And now that we've built our blacksmith's hut, we can immediately move into the third age, where we are going to grab Aphrodite for a wonderful curse power that just turns enemy opponents into pigs because who wouldn't want that ability? That's just great. And also because I can due to the infinite resources. Huzzah! I jumped into the midpoint of the video when you were least expecting me. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Haven't done one of these in a while, so you most certainly were not expecting a spontaneous tea reminder in the center of this video. But alas, here I am to remind you to go grab your cup of tea because come on, we've gone past the 10 minute mark and you should have gone for at least one cup of tea by now. Maybe you didn't even have a cup of tea. Oh my goodness, who could be so easy? 
evil as to not grab a cup of tea. Well, I most certainly hope it wasn't you, Dave. Actually, no, it's always you, Dave. Right, everybody, down into the comment section. I want you to place a reminder for Dave to go grab a cup of tea. He never does it, so it's very important that we tell him now. And if you yourself are called Dave, consider this your reminder. Anyway, I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day, and it's time we jump back into the video as we go and have an absolutely crazy time by destroying the game with access to high tier units before the AI can even comprehend accessing such a thing. Instead of building a wall out of wood or stone, I'm going to instead build an entire wall out of watchtowers. I mean, with the perks of infinite resources, you might as well. And it's time we build a market so that we can move ourselves into the final age of the game. And there we go, with our market complete, we can finally move into the mythic age and grab our final god, who is of course going to be Feta Pepe Feta Pepe 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 Who knows what he is, but hey, he's got a very grumpy looking face. Oh, and I do believe here comes the enemy force. Yep, they have sent a small group of men to try and defeat us. However, we have a much larger army with lovely ranged cavalry, so we should do a great job against all of them. There we go. Yes, no problem whatsoever. We take no casualties and their entire army has just been wiped. And when we move into our final age, we can grab this beautiful piece of research known as literal wall hacks. So what you do is you go to your temple and down here you can see omniscience. It would normally cost you 10,000 gold, which is an absolute ton. However, in this game, no, no, that's, that's just free. And that's going to give us visibility of the entire map, which as you can probably guess, it's rather useful. Yeah, it's rather useful indeed. Oh, and with our omniscience, we can see that we've located an entire enemy army just marching around our lands over here somewhere. Well, they really are not going to stand much of a chance against us. Even with all of their cheats giving them extra units and a ridiculously large amount of resources, we should be able to still defeat them. And yes, the enemy is going for their first attack against some of our towers. I'm afraid you're probably not going to win, friends. Yeah, I do believe I have the advantage here. And I've almost unlocked the secrets of the Titans. And as soon as that's done, we can start unlocking our beautiful Titan Gate, which is, of course, naturally going to completely and utterly mess up this game. I don't particularly know why the AI chooses to never attack via this direction and instead always goes around these trees here to try and get into my lands. But, uh, well, even without the Omniscience, I could have probably worked that out and always just knew where they'd be coming from. Hello there, automatons and men with pointy swords. Good luck against an army of lions. Who would win? Gladiator man or a giant colossus made out of silver with a ridiculously massive swingy sword? The Colossus he won. But of course, this is the AI, so as soon as we defeat one army, they have an entire army ready to go immediately after it. Because, yep, they're 100% not cheating, ladies and gentlemen. We can see their entire economy at work here, and yet they have infinite resources. Anyway, we're going to place down a Titan Gate. This allows us to bring out our Titan unit, the most overpowered unit in the game. So we're just going to hit the Summon All Available Workers, and they're going to absolutely bash out this Titan Gate and give us the most powerful unit the game has to offer. Ah, but we've hit our unit cap. As you can see, we have 140 out of 140, which is a real shame, but what we're going to do is we're going to queue up an entire army to be built and send our existing army off to just annoy the enemy. So we're going to grab all of our men here and have them wander all the way down and just try and destroy that town center of theirs. They might succeed, they might not, who knows. But at the end of the day, I don't particularly mind. And one thing I can do to really, really annoy the enemy is to convert their army into pigs. As you can see, they have quite a large force here coming towards us trying to defeat our army. Now, we have a few magical things we can use. We can use our... We can use our surrender flag to convince the enemy not to fight us. We can convert them to pigs, or we can place down a vault which just gives us infinite resources. I'm going to use the convert to pig strategy on the enemy army. Now, that should greatly weaken them for when they eventually end up reaching our homeland and start trying to fight us. And here comes our forces, marching through the enemy lands. Note, we might as well take out the army that's standing around here for the time being, and move our massive colossuses on towards their fortified citadel. We can take this bad boy out, we effectively win the game eventually. How's our army doing? Oh, they're doing great. We're halfway through to defeating the enemy citadel. Well, you know what? We should probably actually pull off from that, just in case. And you know what? I'll activate the surrender flag. This is going to force the enemy army to stop fighting us, and they're just going to have to sit around for a few seconds whilst we continue building our lovely titan gate. And also my army is going to pull out of their territory, mostly for the fact that I would like to show you all the silly titan that Poseidon gets, instead of accidentally defeating all of their armies. And the truce is going to come to an end very soon, and as soon as that fires, all of these people are going to suddenly start attacking each other once again. Yep, the truce has come to an immediate end. And then we can finish off building this titan gate. Yes, we're very close to actually being able to do it. And there we go, a success. We've managed to defeat the invading enemy army, and I'll send the forces that we actually have built up down towards our friendlies. 
The Titan Gate is almost built. We're about 75% of the way through. Come on, you Titan Gate. Show the world what wonderful monster Poseidon gets. Remember, this is Poseidon, god of the seas. What kind of Titan might the god of the seas get, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, think long and think hard. Come on, Titan, god of the seas. Release to me your greatest weapon. There it is. The Titan is made. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. That's not exactly a god of the sea kind of Titan. That's just a kind of free-headed flame dog. Yes. Not exactly what I'd call, I don't know, a giant Cthulian fish monster. That was the kind of thing you'd be expecting, but no. No, we just have the jumpy, uppy, and downy, swingy death machine that is 100% Poseidon's Titan. Oh, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Anyway, I think it's time we go send our Titan to go defeat the enemy. I'm pretty sure we've absolutely polished them off now. So come on, Titan. Let's go actually win this game. And actually, I'd like my Titan to get the last hit off. So my men, you just wander around, do your own thing. I don't know. But the Titan's now going to come through here, and he's got some wonderful things to say. Come on, Titan. Say hello to the enemy army first. I must say, the unit pathing in this game is just actually disgusting. It's terrible. You can completely and utterly glitch out the Titans by just having them wiggle, by just having one unit that is locked on wiggle side to side which means the titan will never be able to attack 2002 unit pathing in this game ladies and gentlemen age of empires 2 had much better unit pathing i think that has something to do with the fact they're more simpler units instead of ridiculously large free-headed dog monsters anyway one hit and that's their town center gone and technically they have one minute and 59 seconds to build a new town center but uh yes i do believe they're going to surrender now and here we have it ladies and gentlemen the true power of the titan in this game completely and utterly broken and its absolute cheese is magnified by the fact that we have infinite resources and we're able to hit this point much faster than any AI ever could. Even the AI on Titan difficulty, which is completely and utterly cheating the game. And if you enjoyed this exploit and you'd like to see more Age of Mythology exploits, then I'm going to say I'll create yet another Age of Mythology video when this video achieves all. Let's be saucy, I'm going to say 10,000 likes. Can you do that? I believe you can. With enough cups of tea, anything's possible. So yes, when that happens, I'll make another Age of Mythology video because there's a few more exploits in this game that I'd like to show off. Ones that completely destroy the map, like genuinely. So imagine the map for Age of Empires 2, and then someone just selected the entire thing and hit the delete key, and the map's gone, and everything just falls through the floor of the map. Yeah, that sounds quite fun. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? But yes, there we go. I've managed to show off my lovely, beautiful exploit for today. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I most certainly have. A huge thank you, as always, to my majestic patrons who make these absolutely wonderful and silly videos possible. And if you're sat there watching right now and you're wondering hey what do I want to watch next then look no further than this video on screen now trust me you're gonna love it you're gonna enjoy it and I will see all of you ladies and gentlemen in the next one have an absolutely lovely day goodbye for now